Hey, it's Michael Costa. This is the Tennis Anyone podcast. How you doing? It is September 3rd. Tuesday, U.S. Open in full swing. Taylor Fritz, Sasha Zverev playing right now. The battle of the tennis douchebags. Is that too mean? Uh, I should preface this by saying I would absolutely cut off a hand to play tennis as well as Sasha Zverev and Taylor Fritz. They just both seem like the ten the spoiled tennis brat that I uh couldn't stand as a tennis player but of course that's my opinion and judgment and uh i probably worked one percent as hard as both of those players and uh taylor fritz who's won indian wells beating Rafael Nadal, this has got to be an unbelievable opportunity for him. I'm still amazed that Francis Tiafo is is so far into the tournament. Um, but he is playing some great tennis. Emma Navarro just beat Paula Bedosa in straight sets, even though she was down 5-1 in the second set. She is incredibly poised, incredibly composed, excellent game, uh, just great head on her shoulders ESPN is interviewing Katie Ledecky right now I don't I swimming man it's like when Michael Phelps kept winning it was like I don't care I don't care um and I'm in a good mood today I'm not try. I shouldn't have started with the douchebag comment but um I I believe swimming is a terrible spectator sport because you just see one percent of the athlete and thank goodness for the underwater camera. But still, still, I, you know, I have incredible respect for swimming. Uh, I swam three times this year, like laps in open water. And I was dragging with me this like buoy device that so I could take a break whenever I wanted. And I did a lot of breaks. It is tough to swim. I say for the Olympic swim, throw a... Throw a shark in there. And it would be like if you divided tennis into five different skills and then gave each one of those people a medal for that. So if there was like a serving medal, if there was a return of serve medal, if there was a break point saved medal, if there was a won the tournament medal, if there was who can serve the fastest medal, if there was net game, if there was backhand overhead, that's what swimming is to me. And you can't say Michael Phelps and Katie Ledecky, maybe the greatest swimmers, whatever, whatever, but they just win all these medals of all these diff- all this shit. Oh, Diego Schwartzman is the drop shot gold medalist. What? Um, so, good job to Emma Navarro. Good job to Taylor Fritz. Francis Tiafo plays tonight. Um, quick question for you. How many tennis balls get used at the U.S. Open. How many tennis balls get used at the U.S. Open? Wilson is the official provider. Um, Men's and women's tennis balls were different. It used to be women had regular duty and men had extra duty. I think they changed that this year. Um, But again, what's weird about tennis is every tournament uses a different ball, and Igor Svantec last year complained that she couldn't get the proper women's ball to train with uh, and complained a lot about it, and it became a thing. And then uh, Paula Bedosa, uh, they, they spoke to the WTA council about it. And from what I understand, the ball is the same this year. But it is worth noting that it is very strange that tennis has a different ball every tournament. Uh, it should also be noted that tennis is played outside. Uh, it's not like basketball where it's played in a pressurized facility so altitude affects the ball rainy conditions affect the ball so it kind of makes sense that they alter the ball but then again are there different baseballs if you play in the Colorado Rockies then again we had a football catastrophe with the deflation inflation of footballs that one team was 100% caught using a more deflated football to their advantage. They destroyed cell phones. 
<laughs> I think it went all the way to the Supreme Court. Did it? Deflate gate? Deflate gate Supreme Court. I've, I've Googled it before, which really shows how much we retain. Brady deflate gate Supreme Court appeal. Tom Brady's suspension is back once again. His last best hope, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, decides to let him keep playing. <laughs> I mean, it's just ridiculous. So, wild that there's different balls for every tennis tournament. Um, Patrick and John McEnroe had a nice conversation the other night about how why doesn't tennis actually serve the first ball at 7.01 p.m.? Why is it 7.15 one day, 7.20, 7.05? I mean, I was at the uh, Botic Van Zander Schulp Carlos Alcaraz match where we watched Botic win. Um, and we were there at 6.30 and the Muhova osaka match scheduled to start at 7. I mean, they had like a gay pride event before. There was, they wasn't the national anthem, but other times I've been at Ash, there's the national anthem. I mean, it's just like, when do we start? And why isn't it exactly 7 o'clock on the dot? And if that means Muhova and Osaka start warming up at 6.55, then do that. Um, I am tired, and then I should be positive. I am tired of James Blake, Nick Kyrgios, everyone on TV asking the players, tell me about this crowd and how much it means to get the momentum going at Arthur Ashe. It is a... That is a planted question. I don't blame Nick Kyrgios or James Blake. I have also worked for a network where they want you to say and ask certain questions at times. Thankfully, I should say this, Comedy Central and The Daily Show are hands off. They really, they, they encourage you to, you know, occasionally ask certain things or tell you, hey, this is what they want to talk about. But, man, I've worked for other networks where they're like, you have to talk about this. You have to ask about this. But when I hear Nick Kyrgios ask Sasha Zverev, uh, tell me about the crowd at Ash. And then I hear James Blake ask Emma. It's just like, you're required to ask this. I've been to Ash so many times. I've never played on Ash. The crowd seems like it sucks. They're all on their phone. There is a hum of noise at all times. These players have played at Wimbledon have played at Rod Laver Arena. I mean, those are crowds. And I guess, I guess, let me play devil's advocate. Maybe the, the New York crowd is so boisterous that when you get them on your side, it's helpful. But it is not a respectful tennis crowd. I mean, that's kind of the beauty of the U.S. Open is that it's a shit show. And as a player, you're going to have to face intense heat, wind, possibly rain, you're going to play on court 17, then you're going to play on Arthur Ashe, the biggest attended tennis court in the world. It's like the ultimate test. Remember that year that Roger Federer needed to bring a fan on court and they plugged in a fucking fan with an extension cord because he said the circulation was so bad? I mean, it is a mental test, the U.S. Open, but I don't like when they ask a bullshit inflated question about the crowd and I don't need the before match interviews. Anyways, um, I think Nick Curios is doing an excellent job. I don't like the Celtics hooded sweatshirt. I don't like the hat. I say, uh, you know me, guys. I work in late night. Uh, does he have to go suit? I don't know. I think I think it's nice. I think it's. I think he definitely. You know, look, it's really fun when a commentator says, as he did before this Fritz Zverev match. I've played both these guys. That is a fun, from a sports fan perspective, me, it's fun to hear the commentator say that. But I don't like, uh, it looks like he's hungover and it's Sunday morning and he's ordering a breakfast burrito. He's in a, you know, <laughs> I love how, like, it, you know, this is what this is, this is where I respect Adam Sandler because I interviewed Adam Sandler years ago and he was in a sweatshirt and it wasn't a clean sweatshirt. It was a dirty sweatshirt. It had stains on it. And it always makes me laugh when people choose to go super casual, but it's like ironed, you know, or it's like fresh out of the bag. Um, so I don't know. 
maybe maybe he's fighting it because now he has a real job, Nick Kyrgios, and he's like, the one way I'll do this is if I get to wear sweatpants. Um, and it's definitely on brand, but I say dress it up a little, Nick. No one's going to be mad at you. Uh, what else? What else? What else? What else? How many tennis balls are played at the U.S. Open? Before you answer that, and I know that you know that they change every seven and nine games. When I played uh, Futures, and mo- I think Challengers were seven and nine, but when I played Futures, it was nine and 11, which is a big difference. If you got a big serve like your boy Costa, host of the Tennis Anyone Pod with Michael Costa, I would have loved seven and nine. In fact, the two or three times, I twice I played legit ATP tour events, RCA championships in Indianapolis and the Leg Mason in Washington, D.C., making last round qualifying both of those events. I had good results, and probably part of it was that we had a ball change seven and nine, and guess what? I had a fucking serve. I could serve. And when you send me down to Zihuantanejo, Mexico, with a ball change at nine and 11, um, Wow, excellent point. Fritz and Zverev, wow, 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 wow. Fun tennis to watch, these guys. Um, yeah, 7-9 and nine makes, you know, th- th- that was a big advantage for me to say, why don't I risk not playing a future, getting into a tour event where I might actually get a little more pop on my serve because we get fresh balls. Fresh balls. You know what? That'd be a great podcast name. New balls, please. That's on the nose. Fresh balls. Did you just guy just say fresh balls? All right. Um, the answer before you answer how many tennis balls are played in the U.S. Open. Here's how many draws there are. This is something that we forget. Women's singles, men's singles, women's doubles, men's doubles, mixed doubles. Junior girls singles, junior boys singles, junior girls doubles, junior boys doubles. Women's qualifying singles, men's qualifying singles, girls qualifying singles, boys qualifying singles. I don't see wheelchair on here. What the F is up with the with the weech? Boys qualify. I don't see wheelchair on here. Interesting. I wonder if that's a different event. Did they pull... Did they change that? Huh. Anyways, um, also, why is women's singles first and men's singles second? What is the default draw? That If you just go to U.S. Open draw, um, here's why I'm asking that question. M in men is before W in women. Um, here's also why I'm asking that. I would love it if every Grand Slam just picked and did all this the same. The women's singles is first because women are better than men. Or, um, you know, I like that the U.S. Open does a man's first and a women's second, and then they switch that. I like that. I think there's no sport more equal than tennis. Billie Jean King, we got to thank for that. I get a little bit tired of the U.S. Open and their – I'm not going to get into this right now because this is not a winning game for me, but it just doesn't surprise me that the U.S. Open has women's singles first and then, like, you go to the Wimbledon and the women's singles, you have to, like, it's like a separate web browser. So it's just inconsistent, and I find that a little annoying. And uh, knowing the equity focus, I wouldn't be surprised if next year men's singles is first and then the year after that women's singles is first because it's a fucking shit show is what it is. (laughs) Uh, But let me tell you this. I really appreciated watching Carolina Muhova live. She is a thoroughbred athlete and seeing her live uh, I, she, she kind of looked small to me on TV. And as soon as she walked on the court, I said, holy shit, this is a, this is a big athletic girl. And I mean that as a compliment. I don't mean like a, like a beast. I mean it like she looks like one of those Clydesdale horses is going to run you over. And Naomi Osaka with the bows on the shoes and the dress, love it. Love it. I wish she played better, made less errors. 
um, you know, a I have a tortured relationship with Naomi Osaka, but watching Carolina Mohova beat her, um, who's now won her next two matches, she is so good at tennis, you guys. Complete game. The slice backhand, net anticipation, very, very, very good. And I'm always so surprised that she hasn't won more all the time because she is a beast. Okay. Right now, men's draw, quarterfinals. Yannick Sinner, Medvedev. Holy shit. Sinner beat uh, Tommy Paul last night, 6-6-1. Six, six, and one. Uh, I was forced to switch over from Tommy Paul being up 4-1 in the first to the three-body problem on Netflix, which we jokingly call the three-second problem because in three seconds, we're both asleep. I can't figure it out. It is an interesting idea. It's an interesting topic. Physics on TV, sure. Space-time continuum, okay. I can't fucking stay awake during this thing. I'm not an alien guy. I'm a human guy. I'm one of the few people on Earth that believes maybe we are the Goldilocks planet and there's no other things out there. Um, As I've stated before, the people who believe in aliens, they never convince me. They're always terrible at convincing me. And if the if the aliens are so smart, wouldn't they pick more convincing people? I've never talked to a man or woman who believes in aliens and go, you know what? Now that's a convincing argument. It's always like, whoo, that's a little cuckoo. But I'm open. And the car honking the horn agrees with me. All right. Yannick Center, Dmitry Medvedev, Jack Draper, Alex Dimanur. Taylor Fritz Zverev playing right now. Dimitrov Tiafo playing tonight. Now, I'm trying to go tomorrow night, which means I'm going to see probably Sinner Medvedev, which would be great. Um, Dimitrov Tiafo is tonight. That would be fucking awesome to go see. I really hope they don't put Draper. They've already decided. Oh, they're putting both on, on Arthur Ashe Stadium? Why would they put... I don't understand. I don't understand. The schedule? Let me look at women. Let me see what's going on. Women. Quarterfinals. Shviantek versus Pagula. Oh, I see. It just said Arthur Ashe Stadium. One will be day. One will be night. Got it. Uh, women. Shviantek, Pagula. Pagula is just cruising. I, I'm going to pick Pagula for this one. Haddad Mia. I forgot how to say your name. Muhova. Badosa Navarro. Navarro just won in straight sets, makes the semifinals versus Zhang and Sabalenka. That's fun. Those are going to be good. Navarro's in. So t- tomorrow's match that I will probably see is Sviantek tonight. I don't know. Um, I'll have some good tennis. I'm not going to have any Americans, but uh, that's all right. That's all right. It is 4 3 Fritz right now on serve with, with Zverev. The answer to the tennis ball question is roughly 100,000 balls. And my sis, this was a Acosta family text thread. My sister, Christy, said, how many balls do you think are used? Because she sent a funny screenshot of when you type in how many tennis balls, the first Google suggestion is fit in, fits in a limo. If you type in how many tennis balls fit, it's <laughs> sorry, if you type, let me just try it. If you type in, how many tennis balls are used at the U.S. Open? I just searched that one. Are used in a match, are in a case. That's hilarious. People are Googling, how, oh, in a case as opposed to a can. Okay. Fits in a limo. How many tennis balls fit in a limo? How many tennis balls are there in the world? How many tennis balls fit in an airplane? How many tennis balls in a Boeing 747. My thought on that is that those are probably questions people get asked on an interview and a job interview to like, see how someone's brain works. You know what I mean? You ever hear that shit? Like how many pennies fit in a midsize sedan? And then you're supposed to talk it out with your future employer. Let's see how many tennis balls fit in a limo. The number, this is AI. I fucking hate AI. It's saying 372,000 full tennis balls. That cannot be accurate. <laughs> 300. 
in 72,000 tennis balls fit in a limo? This is how stupid AI is. Assuming we are filling a rectangular limo without the wheel, engine, seats, or trunk, you can find how many tennis balls fit into the limo by dividing its volume by the number of tennis of a tennis ball. Is 372,000 full tennis balls. I just don't understand how the answer to... You're telling me... I hate AI. They're pushing it so hard, you guys. Did you see the commercial of the robot doing heart surgery? It's creepy. It looks like fucking Skynet Terminator. So according to this AI, Google's AI, let's see, show more. According to AI Google, 372,000 tennis balls fit in a limo. According to the few articles I've read on how many tennis balls are used at the U.S. Open, which is 100,000, you're telling me that if you pull the limo up to Flushing Meadows and put all the tennis balls that the tournament uses in it, which is 100,000, it would only fill a third of the limo? Absolutely idiotic, AI. Come say it to my face, AI. Say shit to my face. You can't because you're a robot bitch. But the problem is this answer that the AI robot gives us is going to affect the world somehow. It's going to be cited on a research paper, and then it's going to get printed. And this is how misinformation happens. Five, four, Fritz. What else? I loved watching Botek van Zandershulp beat Alcaraz, and the next day he lost in straight sets. It's just so hard to beat these guys. I love watching Poprin beat Novak Djokovic, and then he played pretty good against Tiafo, but not nearly as good as he good as once against Novak. Novak did not win a Grand Slam this year. Yannick Sinner, Carlos Alcaraz, Carlos Alcaraz, yet to be determined who wins this one. But if you were a male and you played in the Olympics, you're out of the U.S. Open. The women are still in it, but it's too tough, man. It's too much tennis. Carlos Alcaraz looked like shit. And he's won the U.S. Open before. It's not like, you know, he looked like he had played too much tennis is what he looked like. What else? Uh, September 13 and 14, I will be uh, at Seattle and Portland. Don't forget, we are now putting these videos up on YouTube. Go to YouTube.com. I think it's Comedian Michael Costa. Or just search Tennis Anyone Podcast on YouTube. I'll show up. It's some, a lot of people seem to like listening to this on YouTube, which is a new development for me, but do it. Do it, do it, do it. Thank you. Um, Emma Navarro, really fun to watch. Fritz Zverev happening right now. Nick Kyrgios, I think a good addition to the ESPN team, but would just love a, a little bit of a different wardrobe vibe. Guess what? He's not checking with me. That's okay. Muhova, watch out. Pagula, taking on Sviantec, watch out. Alcaraz played too much tennis. 100,000 tennis balls are used at the U.S. Open, which according to Google AI, and this is bullshit, kids, is one-third of a limousine. What else was I going to tell you about? Um, my back blew it out Saturday, picking up the dog. Fell over, lay on the ground. Or was it Sunday? I think it was Sunday. So that sucks again. I thought I was making great strides in my back. It's been about a year since I heard it. So we're getting a little better today, but <sighs> trouble. Uh, what else was I going to tell you? I told you about Seattle and Portland Tuesday nights and doing a nice try in New York Comedy Club. Um, and doubles? What's happening with doubles? Because Rajiv Ram is going for his fourth Men's doubles. Can you hear my dog drinking water right now? Uh, are they out? Did they fucking lose? Oh, they did. That's too bad. Men's doubles. They lost. How did, who did they lose to? They were going, by the way, they won three U.S. Opens in a row, you guys. They lost. Uh, Ram Salisbury lost to Lamons and Withrow. 7663. So that ends their run for four in a row. Um, if you go to the John Wertheim show that's on the Tennis Channel app, uh, Saturday and Sunday, I called in. We chalk tennis. It's fun. 
Um, you can see that it's it's a it's a it's on the Tennis Channel homepage when you go to Tennis Channel. And I'll be doing it again this Saturday and Sunday as a preview for the women's and men's final. So good stuff. Great time of the year for the U.S. Open. Um, Fritz is, yeah, they're on serve still. This is going to be a serving fest. I hope you're enjoying your day. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the great tennis we're going to have this week. Remember, after this, the leaves change. We'll start watching indoor tennis. Your kids go to school. This is kind of the last days of tennis. Please leave a rating and a review if you're enjoying this podcast. Please share it with somebody. Please put it on YouTube. Uh, I do get your comments and your feedback. I make zero money on this. I do it because it's fun to talk about tennis, and apparently some people are listening. I'll see you in Seattle. I'll see you in Portland. After that, it's Hawaii. After that, it's the Kennedy Center in D.C. After that, it's Austin, Texas. After that, it's Chicago and Minneapolis. Game, set, match. Casta. Thanks for listening. Tennis in my podcast. Casta.